Yes, guys, welcome back to Absolute Football. And today we look at the debut game between Pirates and Chiefs and how both teams approach the game. Tembinkosi Lodge really loves a debut game. 11 games in all competitions, 5 goals and 3 assists. Orlando Stadium has become a fortress in recent times. 10 games unbeaten in 10 matches. Chiefs were 5 games unbeaten going into this game and were looking for a 6th game unbeaten. Pirates had a predictable lineup with Nyauza and Bule returning to the team. In our previous video, we highlighted the flexibility and personnel changes at a regular for Chiefs. A new defense again with Matoho looking from the bench. Mashiane also started from the bench. Both teams looked to go with a back three in this game. Chiefs would go from a back three to a back five when out of position, a 5-3-2 formation. Akbe would be a sweeper keeper. Pick Manuel Neuer in this game as Chiefs kept a very high line and he had to come out quite a lot. And of course, Pirates would look to find one of the front three with a ball over the top, beating the high line. This is how the first considered goal came about for Chiefs. Lodge would drag one of the defenders out of position and this would leave the centre back about one metre apart and space for a Pirates attacker to run into. Lodge did admit after the game that this had been something they worked on as they know that Chiefs are very slow at the back. Chiefs didn't really press high but they had triggers of when to press. And that was when one of Monare or Mutuare would receive the ball, forcing Pirates to go wide or backwards, not allowing Pirates through the middle, but to go long or wide. Pirates didn't really look to have a plan in place to exploit the half-baked Chiefs high line. Players like Sam were mostly caught offside, and some balls over the top became offense, no one to run into. The Buccaneers would switch from a 3-4-3 in attack to a 4-3-3 out of position. Chiefs tried to match them man for man during the build-up phase. However, Nukovic would at times not maintain a cover shadow on one of the midfielders and Pirates would bypass the press. Cardoso, a better passer than Age, would at times receive the ball from Akpe and look to break the lines with a pass to one of the forwards or midfielders. How can we forget the familiar route, the route one from the goalkeeper to Nokovic up top? That's standard and we won't cover it again. Mashiane came on for Ngobo at the start of the second half. This would give Chiefs some much needed width as the youngster likes to stay out wide and attack the space on the left. The change nearly paid dividends as he won the penalty that Nukovic missed and Gezana saw his name flash in headlines before his rebound attempt to went side netting. We've been complaining about incorrect decisions by refs lately. However, the ref got the penalty decision absolutely spot on in this game. And as in mathematics, what you do on the left, you do on the right. On the right, Frosler and Gezana would combine well for Frosler to attack the space behind the Pirates' left back or wing back, who couldn't decide who to go with. Chiefs dominated most of the game stats with a total of 13 shots, with only two on target, to the three of Pirates, which two ended in goals, and that's the most important statistic, the scoreline. Cardoso's goal was only consolation and not enough to end Chiefs a third successive draw. A lot of missed chances prior and they were made to pay for this. Abate at a minimum as Pirates also missed clear-cut chances with poor final balls. Otherwise, kindly subscribe, like and comment. Till next time, 
Cheers, guys.